Thomas, hey, congratulations for your documentary, Zero Gravity. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It's being showcased uh, this week at Dances with Films um, Festival. How, how do you feel about that? Oh, man. I'm, I mean, I'm, I live in Los Angeles, so it's, you know, a pretty big honor to kind of have a premiere in my hometown. Um, of course, obviously with COVID and things that have been going on, we've been playing a lot of virtually, uh, virtual fest, I mean, and so to kind of have the experience to finally uh, have a, a big screening is, is an amazing uh, pleasure for sure. I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's, it's always, it is, it's always a great feeling to actually have a sit down audience to actually watch a film rather than on the big screen rather than a small screen. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, um, you know, like having a connection with the audience in a way is something that's sort of lacking with, with the, the virtual festivals. And obviously it's understandable, of course, uh, with, you know, with the pandemic and everything. Um, but it makes it slightly difficult for the filmmaker, I think, uh, to kind of just get the sense of, of, of how people are responding to the film and just even having those conversations. Um, you know, like that's precious to us, like, you know, who, you know, this movie took four years to make for me. So to kind of have it, have that, to be able to have that experience, uh, later today, really, <laughs> is, I'm really looking forward to it for sure. Most excellent. So tell us about the originations of this documentary. What sparked it uh, four years ago for you to uh, do Zero Gravity? Yeah, um, well, the idea came from uh, my executive producer, David Worthen, who uh, he had a, uh, he, he's connected with uh, some of the folks at MIT and kind of had the uh, wherewithal to, to be like, hey, I think we can maybe do something uh, with, uh, with the program. And, and I'm obsessed with space personally. So I jumped at the opportunity. Um, and in the beginning, it was actually just meant to be a short film. Uh, and, um, and the reason why it took four years to make is because, uh, you get busy and that short film, we did make it. Um, and, and there was an idea to do a series eventually as well, uh, potentially with, uh, there's a high school competition and the film focuses, uh, primarily on the middle school one. And, uh, long story short, um, while I was shooting, it became something much bigger and grander in the process because, um, you know, uh, it's just, you're, you're let the story is telling it's happening and unfolding in front of you. Right. And so, so it became something much bigger and grander than I always wanted to, to, uh, kind of redo and, and, and kind of tell the story, you know, in a much broader way, because I went on that journey with all those kids and in a short, it's just not possible to have that type of experience. And I had shot so much more material with a lot of other students and things like that. And so um, I, and, and um, long story short, I got involved with a, a soccer documentary that took up a long, uh, a big chunk of time. And, uh, and then when the pandemic kind of happened and everything shut down, it was sort of an opportunity for me to be like, there's no excuses to not finish this movie that I had set out to do. Um, and so I guess the silver lining of, of the shutdowns and things like that for me is, um, you know, there was no other work, but I had all this material in, in the can. And so I just s sat in my basement for, you know, six months and edited it all together, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least you got it done. So uh, <laughs> for, for those people who don't know, could you summarize what uh, what is zero gravity competition? Because I understand it's just the first of its kind, right? Yeah, so it's so the, the the competition is called Zero Robotics, and it's put on by uh, uh, MIT's um, Space Systems Laboratory in collaboration with CASIS and, and NASA. And their goal is to sort of uh, utilize student experiments um, that are uh, facing scientists today. You know, get them involved um, with space and you know, how accessible it can be and it will be like relatively soon here. And, um, and every year the game changes. And, um, and so that's kind of basically what the competition is. And it's, it's an equitable program. It doesn't cost any money uh, for, for teachers and, and students to join, um, which is another aspect of it that was really um, fascinating for me uh, because it was a program I felt like was 
uh, being done right, like education being done right in a way. And it was in the, the middle school program in, in, in particular uh, happens over the summer months uh, outside of the bell, basically. So how, how did you manage to choose this California team? I, I understand you're from Los Angeles, so that must have been very convenient. But, uh, but they're good, they're, there's probably, what, dozens or hundreds of teams that you could easily chose. How, how did you narrow it down? Uh, great question. So, yes. Um, so the, the film takes place uh, primarily in, uh, in and around San Jose, uh, California. And one of the interesting parts of that to me was just it's it's sort of proximity to silicon valley and all the tech companies and then and it was it was sort of a a um there was a purpose in the in 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 tying the tech companies and the need for for stem education and coding and just these skill sets um that was directly tied to the kind of overall theme of the film uh which is that this stuff is necessary regardless if you're you know, turn out, you know, you want to be an artist or, or like, I have no zero, I have zero coding experience. So it's very difficult for me. But what I kind of experienced through the process was that, you know, kids are sponges and they pick up things way faster than we as adults do. Um, and that relationship to, to uh, the Silicon Valley side of it was um, something that I thought would just enhance the need for, and, and why the narrative was important. Um, but this team in particular uh, kind of happened just organically. I, I was focused mostly on finding uh, a teacher that I wanted to, uh, in a way like, you know, we all have memories of, of the teachers that, that uh, inspired us as kids. And I was looking for that type of, of educator. And I was compelled with Tanner, who's the, the teacher in the, in the film, uh, because he had never done coding before, but he was passionate about teaching these kids and his, like just the students. And, and, you know, I got that vibe, um, just, and that was really how I chose the team. It was, it was essentially just, I wanted to believe in the teacher first because then the students would, uh, be engaged and, um, excited. And, you know, that was the idea really. It didn't turn out that way, but, you know, in the, in the beginning, I didn't know if it, if it would, it was just a gut that you kind of follow and hope, hope it works out. Was it, was it easy to convince uh, your subjects to participate in your documentary? Um, yes and no. I think that they were fascinated by the process um, and nobody really didn't want to do it, but the, it was, it was such a new thing for them. They're also kids you know, um, and their families as well, uh, that they were, I think, just very interested in what, uh, what it might even look like or be like. And that was hard for me to sometimes convey because I didn't really know, obviously. We're, we're, uh, but, but I did want to showcase kind of the journey um, as best as possible and, you know, kind of touch on who these people are and you know, uh, personally get to know them. And uh, I think just over time, it became clear that uh, that we were all after the same thing, which is, you know, kind of to go to space, I guess, together, really. So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess to answer your question, it, w it was a little of both. Like, it took a little bit of convincing in the beginning, but also it wasn't that, uh, that difficult because we're, you know, I'm not interviewing somebody uh, to put them on the spot or something like that. It's just about a story that, that people are, are kind of engaging with at the time. Now, you, you narrowed it down to uh, three, three, three kids uh, to be uh, the main focus of Carol Advic and uh, Mi Michaela. How, how did you come to that decision? And obviously you mentioned before, you actually filmed a lot of kids. Right. Um, it was, uh, there were a couple of reasons. One is just, you know, you're looking at the class, who's, who's engaged. Carol in particular uh, just had a very natural leadership-like quality. Um, so, so, that, so she was kind of um, one that I, like, you know, she takes over at, at like a part of the film, uh, you know, with the class and, and they're all the kids are working together. Their relationships, I think, also help their friendships that they kind of cultivated through the process. Uh, and that, that all together helped narrow it down. But I was also interested in, 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 you know, everybody's unique circumstances. What brought them to this class? Um, are they interested in space and science? 
Um, are they just curious? You know, everybody had a different take in the beginning. And, um, and yeah, and so um, Carol, uh, Advic, and, and, and Adrian really uh, both are all kind of just like really opened up and, and invited me in to tell their story. And that also was a huge part of it. And they, they really carry the film. The movie is seen through their eyes. Um, so uh, yeah, it was a very um, rewarding experience though. Excellent. Well, one, one of the things I'm actually fascinated about your film is uh, this film is, is about these students actually doing coding. And um, I, don't, I don't know, you're, you're, you're probably in the same boat. When, when, when I hear somebody say coding, my, my, my brain already checked out. But, uh, <laughs> but your documentary is very exciting. Was that a challenge for you to uh, somehow edit this in a way that uh, doesn't tune out the audience when we, when, because it, it, it is a film about science, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, um, I think, I, I wasn't prepared for how difficult that would really be. Um, you know, especially because even when I was there and the, like shooting, uh, you know, in the classroom and they're talking about, like, I didn't always know what they were talking about because I am, they're smarter than I am in the, in this context. I mean, you know, I'm a filmmaker and the best I've ever done is a WordPress website, you know, for when it comes to coding, you know, I don't, it's, it's, it's very foreign to me. And, and that may uh, have been how um, I digested it in a way so that it could be accessible to, to an audience, but it took a long time to figure out how best to do that. Uh, Cause you know, it can get very dry really fast, especially, uh, as you pointed out, talking about coding. Um, and so, yes, it, it was a challenge. Um, so I appreciate you saying that and that it worked, it worked for you guys. Cause uh, it was difficult and, and, and it had a lot to do with how or why it took so long to, to finish the film and edit it and make it. Now, um, a, lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of footage uh, looks like you gather from MIT and NASA, not, not to mention a lot of uh, B-rolls. Were, were those easy to achieve to get permission um, to be used uh, for, for a documentary like this? Yeah, it, it was relatively easy. Um, I think that the subject itself kind of helped um, you know, we had a trailer too that we, that we sent around, um, before, uh, to just, you know, kind of show people what we were trying to do. And, uh, and also a lot of NASA's material in particular is public domain and, and out there for, you know, anybody to really access and download. Uh, but we did communicate with them a little bit and, and they did send me some, you know, links and stuff. And that was all really helpful. Uh, in particular, the arch archival stuff, like anything Apollo or, you know, um, you know, kind of the, the older, the older material, uh, just because it's a massive library <laughs> to find uh, and cultivate. So, uh, but they were all really supportive and, you know, I couldn't have made the film uh, without, without that, their help, obviously. So, uh, but for anybody who's, who's interested, yeah, a lot of that stuff is available to, to download, um, you know, just for, for your own uses, really. You just have to credit NASA, basically, or the, or the, the, the team of NASA that, that, um, is involved. Excellent. Now you you went in on this uh, long journey with with these students. So what was going through your head as as like you were you were sitting in the same vehicle with them? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I you know it was four years ago when we shot most of it. So um, so I kind of just have these like highlights that I that I vividly remember. But the the most profound part of it was that every time I came back to the class, I felt like they had gathered and gained so much momentum or knowledge that the growth that was happening in front of me was just very obvious. And I was, it just was like such a privilege to see that happen in front of your face. Um, I don't have kids myself. And so this is in a way, one of my first experiences, um, not working with kids, but, uh, but seeing how, fast they grow up basically um and uh i think that was at least my favorite part of doing the film and it actually really really kind of made me want to make the film too um because i just thought it was amazing to see honestly 
That's that is terrific for you. And uh, what's what's next after a zero gravity? Uh, well, I have a, I, uh, I hope that we can uh, continue the zero gravity uh, mission and um, use the film to kind of inspire and uh, provoke more more kind of conversations related to STEM and the need for it and where we're going uh, in the future. Um, obviously, right now in particular, because of where we are um, as a society, it's divided. There's a lot of anti-science stuff. There's all sorts of, you know, we have a global warming problem that we're just now catching up to try to try to deal with. So I hope that I that the film itself uh, can be uh, used uh, to inspire other students to consider, you know, STEM. Uh, I had a student review uh, come back about zero gravity and, and that this is one of those things that you don't realize until somebody tells you in a way, but it was a, another 10 year old student who uh, sort of pointed out that, you know, kids don't have a voice often in society. And because the film like really puts the kids and their thoughts and, and journey in the, in the forefront, it was it, like, this person really responded to that in a way that I don't even know if I had considered. Um, and so that was kind of, that, that was a turning point for me in a, in a way to, to try to make sure that, that we can help get the film out there for that reason um, and give kids some, some context uh, to, to this kind of thing, like through their, through their peers. So that's the mission right now for the film. Um, and then of course, I wanna try to do um, the high school series that I mentioned earlier, um, cause that one is global. And I think that there's a lot of, of uh, kind of new opportunities to juxtapose different cultures and, and, and religions and, and creeds and just, you know, uh, and balancing how education happens and, and where all the, all the all these places or students might be, and in the context of a, of the Earth and and where we're going as a, as a as a just you know as a species and space and things like that. And then um, I'm a big sci-fi fan, and I'm writing a sci-fi feature also right now because um, I started in narrative too, um, and I've been doing documentaries for the last four years. So I would like to take a take a a step back and, and go back to the narrative and, and take because a documentary it's just so long it's such a long process to 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 tell the story um you know you don't have a script <laughs> and so the edit is so much more difficult and everything like that um yeah so that's a little bit a little bit about what's coming up i hope oh, always keeping busy well let, let's leave with one more thought here um when when audiences do do check out uh, your film on Zero Gravity. What's, it, what's the mo one most important lesson that you hope that they walk away with? Um, great question. Um, I think that what I hope audiences take away from the film is a reminder that we're all on this earth together and there are going to be people that inherit this world when we're gone and if you come out of the film thinking about that for a moment um perhaps that will be uh some incitement to change how you think about things or i mean we're talking about covid and obviously the delta variant coming back and and you know we're all i i, I want people to work together uh just like the students do in the film to create um opportunities and do something special um so i hope that all that kind of comes away at the end of it well most excellent well you have you have a very special film you know and um the, the best part is it's very inspirational and optimistic so that's that's the great that's the best thing about your documentary zero gravity well thomas congratulations for zero gravity and congratulations for showcasing it at dances with films this year I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the kind words, and um, I'll, I really appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. Hopefully, we'll get to talk again next time. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you.